promise I'm going to make this one really short. I have not had time to sit down and type, and I don't have an hour to waste. So this ADHD mind for day four is going to be a live explaining a little bit more about how the ADHD mind works. I love the telephone. I really do. Because everybody else in the world hates the telephone. And I don't have to worry about how long I'm going to be on the telephone because everyone else is doing everything in the world to get off the telephone. It's amazing. So everyone's like, well, I prefer text because I'm an introvert. I'm like, no. I prefer phone calls because they end. Text chains don't. Email chains don't. And every time there's another pain and no good easy way for me to end the back and forth, I lose my mind. A part of me dies. And sometimes even, I don't even care if I get to talk to the person on the other end of the phone. I get their, getting their voicemail is just as good. And if they never listen to it, I don't really care. <laughs> if it's important enough that I really need to get you, I will either text or email and risk going one of those 35 minute long back and forths about why you don't like the telephone and it's so much more efficient to text while I'm like, decide to get whatever it is I want to get somewhere else anyway. So I thought I would give you an example of one of the few phone calls that I make that are kind of open-ended, feel like they came out of nowhere, and people are like, what? What are you talking about? Because when it comes to the ADHD brain, there everything is connected in there. That's why I refer to it as like this gigantic ball of yarn. What I can't explain is what that connection is. So in day one when I did the live stream and I was like, I was looking for the connective thread and I couldn't find the connective thread in the story because it's not a real thread, it's one that exists in my brain holding all that yarn together. And when I finally got it, I was like, everybody get out of the way while I get this on the whiteboard and come, down, come up with the podcast. All right, and if you interrupt that process, I might lose this, all the connecting uh, uh, ideas there. And, then, and I don't know when it's gonna come back and I can't grab it again, it makes me really angry. So every once in a while that'll happen and it'll be, and it, there'll be a nice message uh, in, uh, that underscores all of my MKness. Um, and I'm like, oh, you know, this is just so weird. I gotta make the phone call. And I know, that I am pretty sure that in Facebook Live, so I don't use it very often, this all is all showing backwards. So I'll put a picture up eventually about day four if you really wanna care, uh, if you really wanna go deeper and see this. So two examples, very recent examples of phone calls that might seem totally random with like, why are you calling me? Just listen while I connect the dots and then hang up. That's it, totally happy. Here are the most recent two. And get, I don't do this to everybody. I really don't. But the few who do, this is my love language and re like rejecting this call, refusing to get on the phone with me. If you can't even find this quirky, then we're probably like have no business being friends and you won't last in my life very long and that's okay with uh, me as well as you, no doubt. I think it's cute. Susan thought this one was cute too. But Susan is incredibly patient and I think her ADHD might be as bad as mine. So I, there was a day, prime day, I'd been waiting. We needed some fans in part, of our, in part of our house because of a long story that is not worth getting into that is totally separate. But rest assured, we needed new fans for at least three of the rooms in our house. The fans that I wanted, the ones that are the most energy efficient and are going to take up the least space and are bladeless and really safe, um, are super duper expensive. And so I've been waiting for a coupon and waiting for them to go on sale. When they came on Prime Day, I, I spent $600 and got $1,100 worth of fans, and then I cried. And in that moment, even though I cleared all of this and I knew it was a good, it, and we've been saving for it and I had the money set aside, um, and I didn't expect to get a price that's slow, that's still $600 out the door. So I spent the money and then I cried and I got really nervous. And um, through all that, I call Susan. And in the middle of this, I'm like, Susan, hear me out, and I have to tell her why I have to justify this purchase of the $600 fans and how they actually, it's actually $1,100, and I've been waiting for this, and then Prime Day came and I made the purchase, blah, 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 all this story to tell her that really what I was coming at was I needed you to be my security blanket, Susan. I just spent $600 that I can't give back on something I arguably need um, in a time when I'm not bringing home a paycheck. I need you to tell me everything's going to be okay because no one else can do that but you and make me believe it other than my therapist and she costs, you know, $125 an hour. Would you mind being my therapist for free? And she laughed and she loved it. And that like, because in that moment when I'm like, when I'm having a freak out, the immediate thought is, oh my God, oh my God, I just spent money I might never get back and I'm a small business owner and this business might totally fail. 
this is what I need a Susan. And that was really the point. And I, you know, I'm sure that came across as quirky because I don't say that in the beginning. I don't, I don't see it that way. I'm like, I have to start where I see the start is and then kind of get to what feels like the punchline. Now, for a person who's really busy and hates the phone, this is just like, Jesus Christ, really should I? It's going to be some long story that has nothing to do with me and that if, where I'm the punchline and I just don't have time for this. Okay, great. Again, you, we don't have to be friends. You don't have to answer that phone. And believe me, if I don't even get a text response after leaving a couple of voicemails, I stop leaving voicemails because I'm not actually stupid. We're socially inept. So the other one uh, was a kind text that I got, which was random. I got a bunch. I've been getting a lot of responses um, to the, the, the live streams that I've been doing because ADHD is such a secretive thing. If you have it and you're high functioning and you're medicated, you don't want people to know it because they'll be like, oh, you well, I mean, of course, you, you, she takes that all. Like, you don't want to be defined like, no, I do because it's me. Come on. Don't take away my competence because of, uh, of a drug that I need. Like, don't, like, I'm, this isn't a fraction. You don't get to cancel me out with this medication. This medication makes me whole. It makes me better. Like, you don't get to, you don't get to take away my achievements and, as though I cheated by, t by treating a legit medical condition. And there are a whole lot of high-achieving people. Like ADHD is not the spazzy kid. Like that's how we're always uh, that's how we're always presented in TV and movies. It's the one. He's like we're sure he's like he's like Rain Man. He just won't stop moving. And that's so rude and crude and incorrect. And maybe that's some of us. But that is surely isn't all of us. Um, sometimes we're really excitable and we talk really fast. Um, so when it came to the super kind text, I got a bunch of them from all kinds of people, people I have not seen or talked to in 20 years, because my, my phone number hasn't changed in that long either. I'm getting phone calls and texts from people saying, that was really cool, I saw that, I wanted to like it, but I can't like it because I, I don't want anybody to know why I like it, and I'm like, you know what, I get it. I speak up so people won't have to. I just want you to feel seen and heard. I don't really care. I can see the disconnect between my engagement and my likes, and that's knowing how big that is, that's how many people are kind of being helped by me saying some of the stuff I'm saying right now. Um, so to wind this up, it's one of those kind texts. Um, some, some, fuck, uh, some fuck shit happened recently to my good friend Tamara, and I'm still angry about that. Sorry for the cursing, I just don't have a better word, and I'm under time pressure because i got to get upstairs or ask the coach. So when this thing happened and I got really mad about it and I can't do anything about it and I can't say much about it because I'm not, you know, I'm supposed to be a grown-up, but I'm ride or die for this woman, and you don't come at my Tamara. So when I got this kind text, this kind text, to give context on it, was from a person who had thrown me under the bus uh, publicly, um, saying the only reason I was good at something was because of my Adderall use, and that I wasn't, in fact, competent and didn't deserve the job that I had. And made very sure that... Um, my, the, the limited time I had remaining at that job was as miserable as humanly possible. And that person did not, and this is not, and if, you're, and if you are watching this and you're cringing a little bit right now, it's probably actually not you. This person and I are not Facebook friends. Um, so, and, and, we, and, we, and if, if they called, I wouldn't answer. Um, but so I got a time text from somebody who was around, who was around that situation, who thrown, I'd been thrown under the bus, and there had been people watching, and they were like, just want you to know, I'm sorry I didn't stand up in that situation. I saw that. I knew it was awful, but I was afraid they would come after me because I was taking Adderall too. And I'm like, oh, thank you. I really needed to hear that. I really appreciate that. So uh, on, on waking up this morning with a broken air conditioner, like, that did cancel it out. Like, that was my fraction. Being whole again was getting that text. And all I wanted to do, I was like, call Tamara. So... Tamara, who's on vacation, I'm kind of like, she's just done this six-hour drive to Ottawa. And I call her up, and I'm like, Tamara, okay, listen, let me tell you the story. It's about me, but you're going to see where it's going. And so I tell the story about, give her the context, tell the story, all the time that passed. We haven't talked. I put out this video. This person's watching that I didn't know ever paid attention, who referenced this exact moment where no one had my back, and they knew I was right, and they knew that it was wrong, and they didn't say anything, and they still feel bad about it, and... I wondered if anyone ever saw it, but they did. So I want you to know that this recent thing that happened to you, someone saw it, someone cared, and I can't wait for you to get your text. And I'll be just as excited when it comes 15 years from now. I really hope you don't have to wait that long, though. So that is how the ADHD mind works. 
These are two phone calls most people wouldn't make, but I have a pretty good feeling that the, the people that are closest to me, the ones who are like, kind of smile a little bit and, and, and say, what's up, MK? Because they know they're going to get a story like this, and it might be the most interesting phone call they have that day. There you go. You are coached, you are loved, a little bit more educated, hopefully, about adult ADHD. What sounds like a mess might actually be beautiful and that everything that we say and do might be pointing towards you because all of the threads in our brain connect to the things that we love most. If you don't want to be on that list, you don't have to, but if you are, why not be a little grateful for it? Kind of like I am for my gray hair. Age, aging, being old is a gift given so few. Why would I hide this? I love being old. Oh my God, it's amazing. Have a good night, guys.